Welcome, everyone, to this premiere edition of the Healthcare Labyrinth podcast. My name is Mark Ryan, and it's a pleasure uh, to be hosting this podcast, and we hope you enjoy it. This first uh, inaugural podcast is a bit of a soft launch. Uh, we're going to officially go live in January with uh, music and all those things that you often hear in podcasts. But we thought we'd get started in the month of December, and this first edition is really a little bit about me, the podcast, and about the Healthcare Labyrinth website. About a year or a little more now ago, I published a book called The Healthcare Labyrinth. And in that book, I tell you all about navigating healthcare in America, especially your health plan, and also discuss what's really wrong with the healthcare system and some ideas to improve it. Uh, the book is doing well, and the book is actually available uh, in many different forms. Number one, print book is available from Amazon and other leading booksellers. Uh, number two, we have an ebook. Again, uh, on most of the platforms, you can pick that up. Probably the lowest cost way to get a hold of the book. And thirdly, an audio book as well. Uh, again, on most uh, audio book sites as well. So three media, print, ebook, and audio book. And so if you're interested in purchasing it, please uh, check out my website at healthcarelabyrinth.com. More importantly, what I decided to do was to actually launch an entire healthcare website devoted to people's understanding of the healthcare system in America and uh, helping you navigate the system. And so that website is now live. I am doing a couple of different things. Number one, I have a weekday daily news feed, and that news feed is essentially some articles that I think are most relevant for the day after my perusal of about 24, about two dozen websites each day. I love searching the internet for healthcare news. It keeps me up to date and very informed on the goings on. I have a number of subscriptions to various websites, uh, as well as free free websites out there as well. So these two dozen websites are probably the best places to find news. Some of them I'd note is uh, Fierce Healthcare, uh, which is a very good provider and payer news site, Modern Healthcare. Again, predominantly provider, but also some payer news. Kaiser Health News is a great source of healthcare news as well. It's a major aggregator from publications throughout the country, and I have tremendous respect for the Kaiser Family Foundation as well as as well as Kaiser Health News. Healthcare Dive is another one that also uh, writes about healthcare news of the day, and and many others. I I also look at many nonprofit healthcare research firm sites, and the government sites like CMS and HHS. So that weekday daily news feed comes together uh, and gives you the most important healthcare news of the day. It includes a little bit of commentary or insight into the article. So look for that on healthcarelabyrinth.com each day under news feed, and you can very quickly in a matter of minutes read about the most important news of the day and if you want to go deeper, I supply links to uh, each of those articles on the daily news feed. Uh, the next thing I do is a blog. I blog about twice a week on healthcare matters. In some instances, it's about general healthcare matters, uh, but also it can be on the specifics of healthcare compliance and regulation, especially as it comes to Medicare Advantage. So a lot of my healthcare friends out there follow me on the blog because I cover the specifics of regulatory changes out there. But again, I am broadening my mission and going to be uh, blogging and podcasting on uh, more general topics as well. And the last area is what you've probably discovered here on my website and on leading podcasts beginning in early December. This is the first edition will be my podcast, and I will attempt to have a podcast at least once a week that will cover an important item going on in healthcare. It might be from uh, this week's news, or it might be a much more general topic. 
as well in these podcasts, I am going to probably look at one or more chapters of my book along the way and tell you a little bit about that um, in a more narrative format and I'm probably a little deeper as well into a given topic and maybe associate it with some news of the day as well. So again, thehealthcarelabyrinth.com has a news feed, has a blog, and has a podcast. And you can go to the website at healthcarelabyrinth.com to hear a little more about each of these. And I encourage you to just check in daily on the website for any new things coming out. So uh, again, welcome to this soft launch of the podcast. Let me tell you a little bit about me. Some of you may remember me from another podcast called The Healthcare Revolution with MHK. Um, I am winding down my career at MHK. It's been a privilege to be with MHK and the Hearst Corporation for many years now. MHK was started back in 2010. I was one of the founding executives there, and I'm moving on to a new career. I'll tell you a little more about that in a minute. But MHK, the healthcare revolution, sort of came to a close, and that is why independently I am having the new Healthcare Labyrinth podcast as well. Uh, before I was at MHK, which started around 2010, I was with a number of health plans, big and small. Uh, part of my expertise, again, is compliance and regulatory affairs, but I also served in various operational roles as well as business development roles at health plans, again, big and small. I've launched a number of different types of plans, including Medicaid managed care, Medicare Advantage plans, as well as even most recently, exchange plans for a health plan. So sort of a broad uh, base of operational and compliance experience at health plans. Um, prior to that, I was in government. I served as the state budget director and management secretary of the state of Connecticut. Connecticut, about three and a half million people, a small state. So uh, state government tends to do a lot more than you might see in some states. It handles all of the social services, child protection, as well as healthcare programs. So I really got my baptism a little bit by fire uh, in the state of Connecticut on healthcare policy uh, back in 1997. I was the deputy budget director and the budget director indicated that he was going to focus on more the general government side of things. I'd say about 10 or 15 percent of the budget. And I was assigned to really master the health care and the social welfare agencies. And so, uh, again, baptism by fire. I learned a lot about state and federal relationships. Uh, various block grant and healthcare programs, including Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program, and various other programs such as TANF and food stamps and things like that. I was very privileged to be the budget director for a number of years in Connecticut. And uh, this is where I really began to understand uh, the importance of many healthcare programs to people out there. I am a Republican, but I think I'm a little bit unconventional because while I'm a fiscal conservative, I do believe in investments to protect the most vulnerable in our society. And I also think that government programs, especially in the healthcare area, can be wise investments. I make the case in my book, The Healthcare Labyrinth, that you know, if we were to only invest in uh, affordable universal access, that we could actually bend the cost curve and save money over time and bring the huge costs and burdens we see to get today in the healthcare system down to a more manageable level. And by the way, we might even improve quality. And we'll be spending a little more about that in the next podcast, talking about how we are an outlier in terms of the developed world in our healthcare system, in terms of what we spend as well as what our quality outcomes are. So again, I'm a Republican, but you'll hear some things that sound uh, a little more democratic, perhaps, in terms of healthcare. I am a great believer in affordable universal access because I really do believe it would be a wise and prudent investment and that my party actually thinks about it a little bit in the wrong way. 
I told you earlier that I was winding down my career at MHK and I was taking on a new position. I'll be announcing um, the new position I will be taking with a brand new data analytics startup sometime early next year. One of the things that I've determined is while prior authorization will be around for many years to come, and I think it's an important element of controlling costs in the healthcare system, CMS and other regulatory agencies are actually clamping down on uh, prior authorization processes. This was really because of some massive providers lobbying efforts on Capitol Hill and at state legislatures. So you'll see all sorts of uh, new requirements that essentially rein in the use of prior authorization, especially in the Medicare Advantage program, but also uh, among commercial and Medicaid plans, even at the state level. And I really see a brand new uh, paradigm emerging within the healthcare system. As much as I note that prior authorization is probably something that's very important in the system to control costs. Uh, the fact that prior authorizations are being reined in also, though, gives plans the time to think differently about how they're approaching a management of health costs and quality. They can now potentially morph from what I call utilization management the prior auth world, where we've pretty much been fixated for a number of decades, to care management, wellness, prevention, risk identification, interventions, and things like that to really drive quality outcomes. That will take a great deal of investment in technology and data analytics and things like that. But in many ways, this paradigm shift that I hope is coming up will actually save far more, more dollars than we traditionally saw saved through utilization management processes. So this new startup that we will be talking about sometime in early 24 that I will be involved with is really part of the brave new world of healthcare, I believe, where plans and providers will work together on identifying risks of individuals, the type of interventions and care management that will be needed, closing care gaps, and really sort of using interoperable data between health plans and providers to really bring us to the next level, reduce costs, obtain efficiency, and improve outcomes overall. So with that, I think we'll conclude this very first short inaugural edition of the podcast. You heard a little bit about me, about the Healthcare Labyrinth website, and some of the things we'll be doing on this podcast. I hope you enjoyed this brief session and that you will join us again on the next Healthcare Labyrinth podcast. Take care.